I'm a little bit tired by now, but the show must go on. So here is one of the most important things that mankind will ever see. It's my list of 50 favorite songs. Uh, let's start with the softer songs first, okay? The kind of songs that help you relax, help you unwind, but at the same time have like a strong emotional core behind it. Mostly really romantic songs here. Let's start with Elvis Presley, Can't Help Falling In Love, which is in my opinion, the greatest love song ever written. Elvis really deep, soothing voice, and the melody that's really slow and romantic. Yeah, it's just a very tender song and I can really see it in a lot of weddings. I can see it played as one of the most most played wedding songs. But not my wedding, of course. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if that's ever going to happen to me. But, you know, someone else's wedding, sure, why not? Beauty and the Beast. This is a great track, but I don't know how much my opinion is swayed by the fact that I like the movie a lot. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. But even if we evaluate this song on its own terms, apart from the movie, it's still a great song because the vocals here are solid, um, Peebo Bryson and Celine Dion, they have great chemistry as well, and it really feels like a, a Disney song, for lack of a better term. It feels very fairy tale like and it feels like it exists in another world apart from ours. And next up, they long to be close to you, the song is just close to you, but there's the long to be in brackets. Yeah, you know what I mean if you know the song. So the song is by Carpenters, um, the kind of people who cut wood. Carpenters it has really solid vocals as well. Um, very soft song, probably the softest song on this entire playlist. It's tender, it's gentle, and it's the kind of song that makes you feel like you've gone to heaven because it's just a very angelic song. The strings and the very soft, delicate vocals, they just bring you to another world. And next up, I Love Rock and Roll by Joe and Jet, a completely different kind of song. And Joe and Jet is one of the members of the Runaways, which is this great 70s uh, female rock band. And the thing is, uh, after Joe and Jet left Runaways and ha started to have a solo career, her music became a little bit more mainstream. It got a little bit more polished, a little bit cleaner. But at the same time, I think that she doesn't really lose her rock identity entirely. Because on tracks like I Love Rock and Roll, you see that she still very much is in love with this genre of music. And her love is just infectious. This is just a celebration of rock and roll from back to front. And if you love rock, chances are you're gonna like this song because it's, it's about the love of rock. And next up, American Nights by The Runaways, which is the band that Joe and Jet was in that I previously talked about. Uh, the Runaways can best be explained as kind of a female version of Led Zeppelin in the 1970s. But they're a little bit more than that, but generally that's what people considered them to be at the time. And I'm saying this as a compliment, okay? Led Zeppelin is a huge compliment. Uh, and the thing about the Runaways is, in the 1970s, the hard rock genre is really mainly male. And so to have a female perspective on the hard rock genre is something that I really appreciate. And not only do the music and the lyrics are a little bit different when sung from the female perspective, I also like this band because they're just straightforward and it's just about having fun, it's about going to parties, and it's just about the rock and roll lifestyle and it's just awesome. Uh, next up, Shout It Out Loud by KISS. A great arena rock band, but you know like any arena rock band, they are very reliant on live performances. So maybe their songs aren't as effective when they're on records, on albums. However, I think that this song really perfectly captures their live energy and their outlandish performance style. They are very, a very theatrical band, that's for sure, and I think that uh, this song and this entire album actually, the whole Destroyer album, really reflects that. And next up, Adam's Apple by Aerosmith. In the 90s, Aerosmith 
went from being a Boston blues rock band to being more of a rock ballad band who sings mainly romantic ballads. But in the 70s, you know, Aerosmith was really nasty. They are just nasty, really nasty. Uh, lots of drug use, lots of partying. And their music reflects that. Their music is, is just nasty, as nasty as the band. <laughs> Next up, Problems by Sex Pistols. And if you want to talk about attitude, right, Sex Pistols has so much attitude. And I think that they really captured the look and the feel of punk rock in the 1970s. And if there's only one punk rock band that you can listen to in your entire life, let it be Sex Pistols. You won't regret it, I promise. I guarantee I'll give you back your money if you regret it. And next up, Promises by Fugazi. Hardcore punk rock band in the 1980s. So a little bit more hardcore than maybe stuff in the 70s like Sex Pistols. But compared to their contemporaries, um, Fugazi isn't all that hardcore actually. Um, and actually Fugazi is a lot more thoughtful their music is a lot more reflective. They have a little bit more in their minds than I think most other hardcore punk rock bands at the time, which are mostly just rage and more rage. So next up, Know Your Rights by The Clash. This is a socially conscious punk rock track that has a really great social message here about freedom and rebellion and other important stuff that are going on in society. So if you want a socially conscious song that is still delivered in a more traditional punk rock fashion of shouting and guitar strumming, then listen to this song, Know Your Rights by The Clash. Next up, Everything Back But You by Avril Lavigne. Uh, this is pop punk, I think, really great pop punk. Mm, Avril Lavigne's pop punk is a little bit more innocent, it's on the innocent side of things. But I really appreciate that innocence. I mean, not everything has to be really dark and greedy and meaningful. I mean, sometimes you just want a really light-hearted and fun punk rock song, and that's what Evelyn's songs are. And I think Everything Back About You has probably the most punk influence out of some of her other tracks. And some of her other tracks are a little bit more like pop rock influence. And this one is definitely punk. Next up, speaking of pop punk, American Idiot by Green Day. This is yet another pop punk classic. I mean, all fans of pop punk know about American Idiot. Yeah, it's it's just another song that's just full of Green Day's usual style. Um, it's full of Green Day's kind of rage and their style of singing and instrumentals. If you like Green Day, you're gonna like American Idiot. Next up, Dirty Little Secret by the All American Rejects. Another pop punk song. I know, I really like punk rock. Okay, Dirty Little Secret mm, is a little bit more, I think, on, I guess, a more emotional type of punk rock. I mean, it's not so emotional that's gonna make you cry, but it's definitely more on the emotional spectrum, as emotional as, you know, punk rock can be. And I like the lyrics, and I like the meaning behind it as well. It's just a little bit more of a lyrically driven and a punk rock song with a little bit more story to it. Next up, an emo track. Emo is kind of a subgenre of punk rock as well, so I guess you could say it's punk. Welcome to My Life by Simple Plan. Yeah, I still like this song. It's been so many years. Uh, I still relate to this song on some level, I guess. Um, the lyrics here and the music is all about hating the world and hating everyone else. And I mean, sometimes that kind of song can be very relatable. Next up, Breed by Nirvana. Nirvana, classic grunge band, um, probably the most popular grunge band out there and one of the most critically acclaimed as well. I think Breed is their best song, but I'm probably in a minority because I don't think a lot of people like Breed uh, as much as I do. But I like this song because of the speed. It's just a very fast-paced and endlessly energetic song. Okay, we're going to the heavy metal stuff here, okay? The Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden, which is my favorite heavy metal band. Um, the Number of the Beast is 
a very mystical type of song. It's not about the real world and not about so social issues. It's about some kind of far away land in the galaxy, far far away, and about demons and stuff and beasts. And I like that. I like the whole mythical element to Iron Maiden songs. Next up, Hello Point by Slayer. Slayer uh, is a classic heavy metal band and I really liked Slayer's aggressive sound because they're really loud, they're very aggressive and they play hard, especially for that time. And this is a very well produced track because it's really loud and it's aggressive but you could still hear everything really clearly if you pay attention. So that's a sign of good production in a heavy metal track. Next up, the Jester piece by Slipknot. Yet another one of those nihilistic type of song where the singer talks about hating everyone and this time even going further saying it like he wants to rip the skin off another person. <laughs> uh, but it's still great, I mean it's entertaining at least. And it does help you release some of your emotions. And I, I think it's a pretty cathartic song when I listen to it. Every time I listen to it, it feels like I'm releasing some of those negative emotions. I mean, I'm only human, alright? I have to release some of the emotions from time to time. Otherwise, I might explode. Who knows what would happen? Who's Gonna Ride Your Wild Horses by U2? Classic U2 track. And I always liked U2, even in their 80s stuff. But I think in the 90s, when they worked with the super producer, Brian Eno, their songs got a little bit rougher around the edges. It got more of an industrial vibe to it. And it got infinitely better. And uh, this kind of song, like Who's Gonna Ride Your Wild Horses, I don't know how to describe it other than um, it's, it's reflective. Yeah, it's very spacious, industrial, reflective type of music. Next up is a music that's not reflective, but it's just pure sex. Because it's Suck My Kiss by Red Hot Chili Peppers. This is uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers is kind of a combination of funk music and as well as rock music. So you see a, you hear a lot of instrumentals here that are normally associated with funk, but at the same time it has that heavy beat of rock music, and it's just a really great fusion that is in a lot of early Red Hot Chili Peppers tracks, and it's just also really fun, really fun to listen to. Okay. The last song that I'm going to talk about and I'm going to stop this video here and we'll pick it up in another video. I Know It's Over by The Smiths. Really sad song. Uh, the Smiths is probably everyone's favorite breakup band because their songs are just sad and there's no other way around it. And I Know It's Over is probably one of the best breakup tracks to ever release. Uh, I think it has a very vivid representation of what it feels like going through a breakup. And if you don't like to the, the Smiths, you probably just haven't been sad before. So go out to the outside world and get sad and come back and listen to the Smiths. And you're gonna like it. Oh mother, I can feel the soul falling over me.